Afternoon. How's everybody? Steve wants you to be excited. Can you just be excited? Be excited. Hey, a quick question though. How many of you guys are majoring in entrepreneurship? Raise your hand. So you're here because you kind of want to be here. How many of you are just signed up for the elective because you thought it'd be a cool class? Cool. Good to know. So we have about 30 minutes. We'll run through some slides and show you who we are, what we're all about. And then if you could just write your questions down. Last time we were here, we, we kind of took them during the presentation. Um, so we didn't get to a lot of stuff. So just write down your questions at the end. We'll have a, we'll have a QA period. We're going to start with the movie. Is so cool? <laughs> so about, about five years ago, we started Bamboo HR. And Ben's the guy that's really fun. And I'm the guy that's really boring. I'm his yeah, it's true. counterpart. It's true. So, um, so you guys can sleep during my part and stay awake during Ben's. But so five years ago, we started. And then this summer, we were celebrating our, our birthday. We had an all-hands meeting at the office, and unbeknownst to us, our team created a little movie for us to celebrate five years. So this does a pretty good job of explaining who we are and what we do. So, I can hear it. Can you hear it, Steve? Oh, there we go. And we did not know, we did not know they were doing this. Photoshop made that look a little better. issues? Shoot, you guys are all online. Sorry. You guys are all on Facebook or something, sucking all the bandwidth? No, okay. We'll see. Photoshop, for sure, guys. amazing <laughs> and uh, there was a panda who was doing kung fu it was awesome so anyway so funny story about the panda so HR lives in spreadsheets especially in the small business side so bamboo HR what we do is we get them out of spreadsheets so we hate them they're very inefficient they're error prone um, they never keep them up so all data is really inaccurate in small businesses so our software cleans up all of their data puts it all online nice and pretty real-time reports it's software as a service and uh, so being named Bamboo HR, obviously we love pandas. Ryan hates pandas. I love pandas. So I found like I a, hate him. I found like a six foot panda that I shipped in from China. A real, not a real live panda, but like a panda costume. And that is the superstar of the video you guys just missed. Which is, you probably planned it that way because he does not like pandas. I, I got in trouble when I ordered. I don't. The panda. I also don't like spending money. And Ben spent like three hundred bucks. This I is think. An awesome panda. I still don't know how much it really costs. But it's an awesome. Spent panda. like three hundred bucks on this panda costume. It really bugged me. So we like pandas. <laughs> anyway, it's on YouTube. You guys search for Bamboo HR five year. And there's the outtakes too, which are even better than the real thing. But it's good entertainment. Anyway, so some of the clients, Steve, you know, read this off a little bit. We serve some pretty fun clients. It's really fun for us to. Um, we have a lot of these that are, are kind of our heroes of the, of the web, especially in tech. Um, and it's fun to be able to serve, uh, serve these markets and serve this, some of these clients. And so this is just a, ha a handful of the, the customers that we So that I, we serve. I call this our wall of fame. So if you go to our website, click on our customer page, this is what you'll see as you scroll down to the bottom. Um, <laughs> a lot of these companies are really well known in the, in the tech world. We do really well in tech just because our UI, our user interface is really clean and really simple to use. But the fact is that you know you take the small business market world, the small business market worldwide, and it's billions of dollars. And uh, I just I get just as excited about a catering company in Texas or a shipping company in Omaha um, as I do about about these because it's just a real a real problem in the in the small business world of having software that is the right price for them to be be more efficient at their jobs. We had another great video we'll to show you, this goes. but it probably won't. We'll see. This is one of our customers. This is 99 Designs. Can move the 
Mouse. My name is Kyle. My name is Melanie. My name is Tori. I'm Philip. Allison. Ali. Bill is actually the drummer of the heavy metal band. My name is Carolyn Moon. <laughs> Need more bandwidth, Steve. G'day, I'm Patrick Llewellyn, CEO of 99 Designs. Um, our story. So we are a graphic design marketplace. Um, the best analogy to use is that we're sort of like That's eBay for graphic design. So we yeah. match people who are looking for that. Anyway, that was really cool too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I downloaded them. I was trying to be prepared. They're actually on my laptop. I don't know. Actually, can he get online from here if he pulls it up? We'll just, we'll just keep going. All right, we'll skip it. So anyway, they... If you want to watch it, go ahead. They, watch it, watch it. 99 Designs is a company out of San Francisco. It's really cool. It's a, basically a marketplace for designers. If you want a logo done, you say, I want a logo. They tell you what the price is, and there's up, you know, 30, 40 designers will submit logos for a set price, and then you pick the one that you like, and that's who they pay. So a pretty cool company, very, uh, very innovative, very fun uh, to see how they've evolved and what they've done, and it's fun to, fun to serve them. So... The question is, why, why are we doing this? I actually, I, I do it because Ben, ben made me do it. Um, but uh, I was Seth um, back when I was at BYU. Um, so I, I was in this class as a TA. It wasn't as fancy, and none of us had laptops. So, uh, But it was really cool to come and listen to speakers that were just amazing. I mean, you guys have the, the privilege of listening to some amazing ones. And uh, it was fun to learn, fun to, fun to dream, keep the dream alive of, of potentially having a, having a business and, and running it. Um, but my entrepreneurial dreams were kind of put on hold as I first went to work for my computer uh, out, of, out of school. And uh, anyway, learn, learned a ton in the process, and it's been really exciting. But I, I worked at a company with Ben, Mingle Match, for online dating, uh, which is kind of funny because now it's, I think, more accepted. Uh, sort of. Back then, he said, hey, come work with me at, at Mingle Match. And I said, no way, because I didn't want to work in online dating at all. I didn't think that would look good on a resume. It's like old school Tinder, you know, way, way before Tinder was cool. Yeah. So I didn't want to go work with him, but Ben and I worked together again um, after meeting at, at, uh, at my computer. And, uh, and then it became Spark, Ben sold Spark, and then he said, hey, let's go, let's go do something. And uh, I, was, I was doing okay, <laughs> but, uh, but he wanted to go do something. You can share your thoughts on what you're... What you're <laughs> he didn't want to quit. It took me two years to get him to quit Spark Networks. I'd be like, come on. My wife was sick of having me at home. I needed to go do something. I tried some other things that weren't as fun, and uh, I just really wanted to do something. So we actually sat in a room with a whiteboard just down the street, like a small, small room, um, for about two or three months, and we wrote down every possible idea that we could think of. Uh, from all of our experience and background, different domain names that, we, that we'd come across that we owned, and then we ended up uh, picking, picking Bamboo HR. But I was like, Ryan, I, I was one of the first ones to graduate from BYU with an emphasis in entrepreneurship. And uh, I think it was the second, second or third year that they offered it. And I remember specifically coming to this class and watching people talk. I think there was a guy that came in and talked about his pool cover company, um, an IP guy, and... The, what's the one that did the scrapbooking? You said her name the other Lisa day. Lisa Burson. Yeah, Lisa Burson. She still comes, I think. Anyway, and I just thought if, if I, knew, I knew that they were all probably smarter than I was, and all of you, I promise, are smarter than me, and he'll confirm that fact. But I knew that I was going to work hard. I love to work. I'm a competitive guy, and I want to win. I thought if they can do pool covers, I can go do pool covers. I've been working for a long time. I've worked through college. I like work. So I knew that I was going to work as hard as they would or more, and I knew I could figure it out. So I knew that eventually I did want to do something that was my own thing. Uh, while I was in school, I met my wife. She's from Arizona. We got married. I wasn't looking for a job. But one of my professors sent me down to mycomputer.com, who hired me to work. And I was like their first sales person that was selling advertising online in like 1999, when most people didn't know what it was. So really early, I got into this space and learned, learned quite a bit and loved it. And we love, I think, building things and solving problems. Because it seems like that's all we do all day long is solve problems and make things better for people. So I, I'm, a, I'm totally risk averse. So for those of you that are here just for the elective, that resonates with me a little bit because I'm, I wasn't the guy that said I can go do pool covers. I was the guy that said, gosh, you gotta, I got to have benefits and I got to have 
uh, I got to have a good salary and I want good logos on my resume and climb the climb the ladder. But in the back of my mind, I always wanted to do I always wanted to do something. My dad was an entrepreneur growing up, um, and so watching you know I didn't have the same kind of mindset as far as uh, what you might typically see uh, you know growing up with a, a dad who you know goes from job you know and works really hard and gets promoted and gets a gold watch at the end and whatever. So my dad was his was a completely different path. So I secretly wanted to be an entrepreneur, and uh, gratefully I married a wife uh, who was very patient, and we 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 saved our money while I was <laughs> while I was working and actually had an income. And then when Ben said after the two thousandth time that he said let's go start something, I said okay, and so I was pretty excited about it. I I. Uh, I was was pumped, but I was also a little nervous because it was a it was a huge risk, uh, going from something very very comfortable to to nothing at all. And when we sat in that room, that literally ten by ten office, um, of all the ideas that we came up with, some pe some people did. You know, some people you know, you've probably had ideas. You're like, that was my idea. You see something at Walmart or see some other website idea or, or app. Um, that happened to us on a couple of those things. Some of them were just they were stupid. They were stupid ideas. Um, and some, some were ones that probably would have made money, but for me at least, and I think Ben as well, uh, I wanted to make a difference in the world. I wanted to make the world a better place. So that eliminated everything related to advertising. Any advertising business, selling ads, finding different ways to promote things, that was kind of off the table. Um, I was ready to strangle Ben, and we had to take a time out for this a little true. bit. Because I was uh, being in a room with him. <laughs> In a room with him, every four to six months, we need a separate time for, out. For, <laughs> being in a room with him for two months is, uh, yeah, close to torture. Just kidding. It's, it's not. true. No, it's true. Um, but so we took a little break and then found an idea that we thought would work, and it eventually became Bamboo HR. Started out as a weird name that we couldn't remember. My wife couldn't remember it after the first year, uh, so we changed the name, which was a good thing. But I think the why of, of entrepreneurship is always about freedom, right? That's the, well, at least one of the things you think about is just freedom to be your own boss, right? Um, to do the things that you want to do. And uh, so that's that's interesting way to think about it. I used to think about it a lot that way because you think about, man, I could I could do whatever I want, when I want, and that's only partially true, I think. That's uh, not at all true. <laughs> So, uh, you know, there's, there's obviously things that you have to get done and there's a lot of work, especially early on was, was extra tough, um, where we were back to back in that same room that we brainstormed in and Ben was selling everything that he could to, to close deals and, and get people convinced enough to, to use Bamboo HR. Um, but the real why, I think, is, is uh, f for me, is I, I, want to, I want to build great things. I'm very passionate about building. Ben said, talk, you know, talked about building things. So I'm very passionate about building, but I'm also excited about um, being a dad. And we want to build a, a startup. We want to build a company on, uh, on a path of kind of 40 hour work weeks versus the typical norm of a startup where you're sleeping bags under your desk and you stay there and you hack all night and hack on the weekends and it's all you eat, sleep and breathe uh, for that long. So family's a huge, huge deal. Here's a picture, a wonderful picture of Ben's family. He's got great kids, his wife is awesome. I actually left, um, I left the uh, Utah Best, it just changed to Allegiance before they merged with Allegiance Tech, we changed the name. And I, I wanted to be a t-ball coach, honestly. I want, I want to be a t-ball coach, I love being a dad, some people don't like it. I'm I'm a huge fan. Um, it was it was it was a grind. Some of those some of those days, weeks, months, working at other places, and I I just didn't want it. I didn't care. I, it's not about being rich. I don't care. I just wanted to have balance and be able to spend time with uh, with and on those things that were most important to me. So families, you know, we tell everyone that we hire, it's family first. You know, your daughter's in a play, go. You know, you need something happens, leave. There's just a lot of flexibility around family time because that's why we're working. We're working so that we can have the quality time with the family. It's not vice versa. So, and then there's my little family. I got three little munchkins. This is an old picture because this kid's like going to be six, seven. I'm going to be his agent. He's huge. Ryan's like the shortest of all his brothers. This is true. And the talent is already taller than everybody in this room, probably. So that's my and little he's like, family. He's like seven. So it's fun. It's 
He does. He size 12 shoes, so he's got bigger shoes, bigger feet than his dad. Um, but I mean, it's it's awesome just to be to be with them and have time, and then also it's fun to be able to build um, build awesome things, and that's what we get to do every day. Uh, so one of the first things that I, I learned, and I learned this in this class, but it didn't make sense. Sometimes the stuff you learn here doesn't make sense until later, um, and that's to love what you do. Some of the people that would come in and talk um, in the Entrepreneur Lecture Series were passionate about industries or markets that I had zero interest in, right? Absolutely none. You've probably had similar experiences, but um, that's the number one thing for me is, is I love to get up. Mondays don't suck. Um, or stink uh, at all because I love to uh, I'm trying to get rid of the suck word in our family. So, uh, uh, yeah. So you owe me, you owe me fifty cents. <laughs> so I, you got to do what you love to do, and sometimes, the, sometimes there was a there was a feeling that you had to make this huge. You had to be the next Omniture that got sold to Adobe, and I I I don't think that you have to do that. I think that if you have some idea and you want to build a lifestyle business, sometimes that word is used as a, a cuss word, I guess, around entrepreneurs or especially venture capitalists. I think lifestyle businesses are fantastic. I think other businesses that can grow huge are fantastic. It really depends on what you want to do. But what really matters is if you love it. I mean, you absolutely have to love it. Um, if you don't, it's tough. If you can find a way to do something that you absolutely hate and make a ton of money, maybe, you know, maybe that'll work. But it's, it's hard. It's hard to get up every day and get excited to go to work. Um, you have a lot of cool companies that have started because they stopped liking going to work and they started to do something that they love to do. So you have anything to add to that one? Nah. Okay. Ditto. So this is just one quote that I really like from Steve Jobs. Whatever you think of the guy or not, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know it when you find it. That's 100% true. I've seen that in my own life, and, and it's, uh, you know, sometimes it is just winning. Ben loves to close deals, loves it, and he loves to, to beat up on the competition as much as possible. We don't spend a lot of time thinking about him, but he loves to win, and that's good because I love to be conservative, and so it's, it's a good balance, but, uh, but that, his passion is met at Bamboo. My passion is met at Bamboo, so it's fun to, fun to have the, the, that taken care of. You want to talk about people? Yeah, you know, we, uh, we have a hard time finding, finding people who map to kind of our, our vision that we'll talk about in a little bit as well. Um, but when we hire, we're trying to create a culture around the beliefs that we have. And so as you go look at, look at different places that you want to go work, different things that you want to do, make sure that you're looking at the people because they really do matter and make sure you find like-minded people that share, your, that share your values, that share your mission, because that passion that he's talking about is meaningful. And for those of you that are married or planning on getting married, it matters when you come home excited about what you're doing versus coming home just bummed because it sucks. I say that. And it's a, it, 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 there's, a, there's just a big contrast. So quali quality of life isn't money. Money's an illusion. Um, it, it gets you comfort and it gets you a lot of things. Uh, but the reason to do it is just to have, the reason to make the money is to have that quality of life. And you don't have to have a billion dollars to have quality of life. I mean, think about how much you might need a year just to have amazing quality of life. And that's kind of, that's the ultimate goal. And so finding people that are like-minded around those types of things and what we're looking for matches to what they're looking for. Because don't get me wrong, we work really, really hard. We don't have, we don't have a ping pong table, we don't have a pool table because we come in, work hard, and go home. Anything you'd add to that? So the other thing is, uh, you know, we, well, one of the fun things about being an entrepreneur is that we get to pick who we work with every day. So that's awesome because uh, then, you know, it's, it's the, the people that fit the company, the people that match our culture. So one thing to, on the flip side of that is as you, as you look at uh, different job opportunities and things like that in your future, if there's a company that you really love and things are going well and for some reason it just doesn't work out that they don't uh, don't have you back. One of the things to note is it's kind of like the the dating thing when a girl breaks up with you and says it's it's not me or it's not it's you it's me. me right. So sometimes it's sometimes it's the fact that it's not a culture fit and it doesn't matter and that's okay. I used I I applied for a local company here a local tech company three different times had interviews three different times and they never they never had me back after that first interview. 
really depressing, sad, cried to my wife, and, uh, and uh, I didn't really cry. But uh, I, you know, it was a bummer. It was a bummer to be looking for work and, uh, and liking this company a lot, thinking it would be a great fit, but I wasn't, I wasn't a culture fit. I had, the, I had the stuff on the resume that I needed, but I didn't, it wasn't a good culture fit. Culture is huge at, at Bamboo because we want to work with great people in addition to building amazing stuff. Um, so I, I know that Jim Collins is quoted a lot here, but this is a great quote that I, I really appreciate. Those who build great companies understand that the ultimate throttle for, uh, on growth for any great company is not markets or technology or competition or products. It's one thing above all others, the ability to get and keep enough of the right people. Um, we've, we've had our mistakes in hiring. Uh, we've had our mistakes not only in people that we hire, but even during the interview process. Sometimes we'll make a mistake. Uh, we're not perfect, but we try really, really hard to make sure we get a great culture fit first. And then second is that skill set, making sure the skill set matches. We've hired some fantastic individuals. Uh, one I can think of right off the, right off, uh, off the top of my head is a guy who we started. He started as a marketing intern. Um, he was a, a film student out of, out of BYU. Started as a marketing intern and um, just has amazing capacity for things. And we just kept adding, kept adding, kept adding. He's got tons of responsibility and does amazing things. And uh, that's fun for us. We will definitely choose uh, culture fit over skill set any day of the week. Uh, last thing we want to do is hire somebody who's brilliant, executes well, and is just a horrible person to work with. Um, it's just not our style. So. Very true. And it's especially with hiring right now where it's a, it's an applicant's market. I mean, it's so hard right now. There's been so much money just flowing into this valley. It's great for the valley, but it's really hard for startups. Because I've got to compete with Domo. I've got to compete with Property Solutions is growing. AppTask is growing. Um, I shouldn't say these names because you guys don't want to apply there. You want to apply at Bamboo HR. But they, uh, there's just a lot going on. And it, it's hard because we compete against these companies, but we're a startup. We work 40 hours a week. And they've got you know, the free meals and the ping pong and all the benefits and the game room for programmers to be there all night and, and, uh, and, and pay and other things because there's so much venture capital money coming in. So it's really hard for us, for us to compete. So it's, it's kind of we have to go even spend more time making sure that they're, they're a match. And when they have two options and they look at all things being equal, they're going to pick culture. That is the one positive thing because they have to know that, that, that Bamboo HR and the way we are is what they want. And so we know that they want to be there, which is good. So we talked about culture. So just, just so you know, we've taken a, it took a long time to kind of get this down on paper and have it written for us, uh, you know, or written so we could have it in front of us at all times. But we want to be the number one recommended HR experience for small and medium businesses in the world. So you'll notice a couple things here. Number one, so we're not going to be the, hey, we're number three. So we actually do want to compete at a, at a high level. Um, Mingle Match was a little different. Ben loved flying under the radar. Didn't matter. He's happy to have Match.com, Yahoo Personals, and others be kind of at the top and just kind of fly under the radar and, and do great in niche markets. Uh, but we want to be the number one. And it's also an HR experience instead of just HR software. So it's everything from the time that you talk to our salesperson or hit our website all the way through through implementation and actually using the software, we want to be the absolute best HR experience. That translates not only to the HR person or the IT director or the CEO that's buying the software, but also translates, translates to the employees. So if you go apply through Bamboo HR's applicant tracking system, you click apply on some job at Stitcher or at 99designs, and they're using our applicant tracking system, we want that to be an amazing experience for you as an applicant. Then if you get hired, we want that whole process to be an amazing experience for you. Ultimately, anybody that doesn't use Bamboo HR, we want them to feel, uh, feel really sad for their companies. We want them to want to tell their HR person, hey, at my last company, I used Bamboo HR. It was amazing. Please, please, please get it. Get out of spreadsheets and start using our software. So we've got high aspirations. We're in six languages. And, uh, and like Steve mentioned, you know, we're in over 70 countries. Employees in over 70 countries are using the software. So that's tons of fun. Um, the values. So this is another thing that took a long time to try to figure out. Other than you know, we wanted to be family friendly, that was really important. But these values kind of are, a, we distilled them after all the things that we thought about, all the things that we felt, um, kind of things that we've seen both positive and negative as far as examples uh, in, in other companies that we've been at. 
Um, but these are the values that we came up with as, as a team. You want to walk through those? Yeah, number one, enjoy quality. Well, you can read them all, right? We got about five minutes, and then we need to do some QA. Um, but this, this did take a long time for us. We, when we talked about coming to this class, we thought, you know, we can put some pie charts on there. We can show you our growth. Um, we've doubled every year since we started, and we're going to keep doubling. We can show you all these, all these things. We thought a lot of you are going to start your own companies, and a lot of you are going to work. Everyone's going to work somewhere, right? And so we wanted to show you the things that were really meaningful to us. I mean, we're really deliberate about all of these things. It's not just lip service. And one of the things about HR is that you know, every company in the world gives lip service to their people. They all say, oh, our people are our most important asset. It's all about the people. But not many, peop not many companies really actually do anything about that or follow through. And so we wanted to take those things that we're trying to change in our own company and make meaningful in our own company and project those across every client we have and anyone that interacts with us. And that includes, that includes our own employees. These are the things that are important to, to, to me and that are important to Ryan. And these are also the things that are important to the, to the employees because they help share in creating, this, in creating this vision. So as you go out and you look for where you want to be and what you want to do, be deliberate, be thoughtful about it. You know, know what your values are and what characteristics you want to, to have in your work environment. One of the things that was fun, just, just a quick addition, is that these were, these were true from the day we started. We just had never put them down on paper. So it was really fun to kind of get them out there finally and, uh, and to, have, to kind of see them come to life a little bit because we started out this way, so it was fun to see it evolve and actually be written so that everybody could see it and uh, that it's easier to communicate across the culture as we grow. The last, I think this is the, one of the last ones, but execution. Um, is probably the biggest thing. I, I tease my brother because um, he loves he loves entrepreneurship, and um, I actually work with him, um, so I love to tease him a little bit about this. But at one point, he had a website, he had a domain name, he had a name of his company, he had a shopping cart, he had a merchant account, but he had no product at all. Right? No service, no product. I loved I loved to tease him about it, and uh, he, the company's name was Bazang, and my little. At the time, the 12 year old boy or 13 year old boy, he was like four and he loved to say, bazing, bazing, and he'd say that to his uncle all the time. But um, it was just funny to, to, to see that you can have great ideas and you can have exciting things uh, and, and aspirations, but it really comes down to the execution. We, are, um, we aren't, aren't the smartest guys in the world. Um, Ben's really good at executing, and I'm really good at catching up to him. Um, so that's that's how it works, and that's why that's why I think it works that's, really well. That's, that's baloney. Um, this guy does all of the execution. It's, and uh, can we mute his? Yeah, microphone? can you mute my mic? Anyway, so listen, that's uh, an interesting point. So I've had other experiences at startups and other partners, and been with other founders and invested in other companies. And this, it's it's rare to find a relationship where it fits. Like all of the. The weaknesses that I have, he, he maps to perfectly, and a little bit vice versa. So there's a real clear division of labor and who does what, and then at the same time, the things that matter, we collude on and work together on. So as you think of partnerships and things that blow up, in fact, I get you know, emails from students all the time that talk about, hey, how do we divide up equity? And I'm like, hey, you don't even have a company yet. No. And uh, you know, just trying to figure out how that's going to work, you need to know that your mentality is the same, that you're on the same page, you're going in the same direction. And we have that here, and it's, and it's, and it's unique, and it makes it, it makes it rewarding and a lot, a lot more fun. So this was one of the quotes that we found early on, especially when you're banging your head against the wall and things aren't moving as fast as you want them to. Um, overnight success takes years. It's really funny to watch these companies that seem to come out of nowhere but ultimately have been really grinding it out for, for years or months. You know, it depends. I mean, some people hit it, hit it lucky really fast, and that's great. But it really does take a lot of hard work. It's fun, but sometimes you want to curl up in a ball and cry. Um, I have to tell you a story a little bit about the differences between me and Ben. So we went to this huge conference. It's, it's called SHRM, Society, or Society for Human Resource Management. And um, there are, I mean, there were th tens of thousands of people at this conference. Massive, right? And my goal, I'd been to a couple conferences with Ben. I hung around Ben a, a lot. And my goal was to be more like Ben. I wanted to be more outgoing. I wanted to talk to people more. Like, I'm super, super reserved. I just don't, if I don't talk to anybody, it's a great day. And uh, so 
I, I set a personal goal when we went to this conference. We flew in. Was it Vegas or Chicago? Vegas. Vegas. So we flew into Vegas and literally went right to the convention center. Everybody's in this big opening session. I mean, it's massive. I mean, we're just stunned. And we decided we're hungry. So we said, well, let's go get something to eat. And I went, we went to get a bagel. So we're at the place, and I see the toaster, those little conveyor belt toasters, you know what I'm talking about? OK, so, uh, so I go, and I say, I want to toast my bagel. So I st stick my bagel in the toaster, and I turn to look at this lady. And I thought, this is my chance. I am going to do it. I'm going to talk to somebody. And so I turn to this lady and start talk having this conversation with her. And I'm feeling like I'm doing pretty darn good. I'm doing really, really well. And the next thing I know, she says, you're on fire. And I said, you bet I am. Uh, and then the truth of it was, my bagel was actually on fire. So I turned to look, and my bagel had gotten stuck because it wasn't sliced perfectly, evenly. And so it was a big bagel, and it got stuck in there. And there were literally flames licking out of this toaster. And I'm just sitting there, frozen, right? That's me, because I'm frozen, don't want to talk to anybody, risk averse. There's flames coming out of this toaster. And so next thing I know, Ben's unplugging the toaster. He goes over to the, tickle, the, the pickle jar, grabs the tongs out of the pickle jar, pulls the flaming bagel out, and throws it in the bottom of the toaster. Crisis averted, right? So good job, Ben, yes. And uh, so and it was funny. As we, and I, at the end of that, I thought, I'm not talking to anybody for the rest of the conference. <laughs> so uh, the, the moral of the story is don't try to do anything that you're not good at. That's what you do. <laughs> So just kidding. That's not true. So um, uh, the moral of the story is you actually have to keep trying, even when it fails uh, dramatically. I could have killed like 80,000 HR ladies um, by my flaming bagel. Um, but the truth is you have to keep, you have to keep going. Um, you have to keep trying. And I do. I try, I try to do a better job at talking to people and be more outgoing and, and uh, be more like Ben, which is my, my goal That's in life. That's your problem right there. <laughs> But, uh, but it was also interesting to think about how many times people start something and, uh, and run into roadblocks or run into hurdles. And we did this a lot early on where we just continue to learn. We continue to try to um, iterate and make it better. And, and that's one of the things that's fun for us, too, is we love to, love to try that out. I think so. the latest word is pivot, right? You guys hear the word pivot a lot until you're almost sick of it. Pivot, pivot, pivot. Um, yeah, go ahead. So we're hiring. <laughs> we're hiring a ton, so we're going to use this opportunity to recruit a little. So this is what we're, we've got going right now. But if you have some other skills and, and talents in, in this, in these, and other areas, or if you know people do, we'd love love to have you apply or let people know about it. If your if your spouse is looking for work while you're still going through school, if you're trying to keep the dream alive and, and be an entrepreneur, and your spouse actually needs to bring home some money, then let us know. We'd love to. We'd love to. We'd love to meet you. But. Uh, Anyway, so, but as you do that, when you, did he talk about this one? Which, which one? We so, have lots of stories about this, you guys. Just be careful oh, about what you put on your don't, Facebook don't page. Don't put junk on your Facebook page. <laughs> I'm going to find it. I promise. I'll read it all. I'll read your old Twitter, Snapchat. I'll hack it and find your stuff. <laughs> I will. I'm just telling you guys, we get, we get resumes sometimes. I actually had um, a couple guys come that were, that were raising money for a business. And I went and found the CTO and is talking about how he got drunk last weekend on Facebook and all this other stuff. It's like, look, you, you need to know that people are going to watch. They're going to find your stuff. You put it out there, they'll find it. So you just need to be careful um, about when you apply. You know, do a cleanup. Make sure that some of the stuff that's unprofessional, that, uh, that might not map to that company's culture. Um, yeah, I found we've, we, we recently um, had a person who applied. And she actually had the same name as someone who'd been arrested for drunk driving. And so I went to our HR person and said, hey, this person's been arrested for drinking. And she freaked out. It was pretty classic. But it wasn't the same person, just the same name. Um, but that individual, actually, all of their history in Facebook, going back a few years, they'd filled out these you know, classic things like, what's your favorite swear word, and all these other things that just probably weren't really her, but she'd filled it out in fun. You should need to be careful about, about what, you put, what you put online, because people, people are watching it and seeing it. Um, this is our mantra, and we put this up, and it's not, you know, we don't say this flippantly, and you could put, you know, happy hubby, happy, happy life as well. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we, we, there's real meaning here, and there's a lot of reciprocation that occurs in a business partnership as well as in a marriage, and uh, I probably say this 10 times a day and just think about it a lot because that's what it's all about, and the goal is to make her happy 
and to make her life meaningful and recognize what she's doing. As I'm off doing my stuff that you know she knows a lot about, but she's not there. I spend you know as much time in the office almost as I do at home. And uh, this is this is important, especially with with our culture and where we're coming from, um, BYU and our beliefs and and what we feel is important. I don't say this flippantly at all, and it's very meaningful. And there's a lot of depth to this as you think about it. If there's nothing else you get from this uh, at all, yeah, I don't care is, if you don't learn anything. Just this, this is the one thing that'll save you all kinds of headaches and trials and all things that are probably well deserved. But uh, Ben, so because you can't say anything right now, Ben is actually one of the best the best husbands that I know, and I'm a better husband to my wife because of how he treats Natalie. And it's because, not just of this, but everything, like he said, that goes behind this. I'm a better person because I get to hang around with, with this guy and, and get to learn with the way he does it. And it, no joke, whether you want to be an entrepreneur or not, it's a, anyway, huge deal. So just, just as we're wrapping up, I want you to know that I, I absolutely love this university. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's such a tremendous uh, privilege to be here. Um, as a student, um, I loved every minute, every minute of it. Crazy roommates, didn't do their dishes, drank my orange juice. You know, you just wanted to pound them right in the face. Uh, <laughs> I, I loved, I, I do, it comes out every now and then. Um, I, I loved it. it. This is a fantastic university. No matter what, what complaints you have about whatever it was that happened or, or ex, you know, roommate experiences or wards or whatever, this is a great place to be. And your time here is is really unique, and you guys are really uh, you guys are lucky to be here. I one of my favorite memories was just before uh, winter semester was turned turned out. I don't know if Dr. Booth teaches biology anymore, but I love Dr. Booth, and I remember seeing him. I walked into the to the um, bookstore, was buying some gifts after selling my books, and wanted to buy some gifts. And I saw Dr. Booth, loved him. He was my freshman year biology 100 teacher. And I was so excited to see him because, you know, there's 900 kids in there, so you don't, you don't ever get to really talk to him much. I'm all, Dr. Booth. And he says, he says, what's the powerhouse of the cell? And I said, the mitochondria. He said, Merry Christmas, brother. <laughs> and it was like one of the highlights of my, my whole BYU experience. <laughs> I loved it. This is a, this is a great place to be. It's a unique, it's a unique environment. And uh, anyway, I just, I just hope you enjoy every second of it because it, it's fantastic. It is a great place to be. You learn a ton. You meet some fantastic people and have the most amazing experiences possible. So Every time we leave here, Ryan says, I love that school. I, I love do. that school. Um, one of the things that, that bothered me a little bit while I was here was we, we would have these people come into the entrepreneur lectures and they would talk about all this money they would make, how successful they were. And uh, I thought as I came back, I thought about the things that are meaningful to me. I said, you know, if, if I ever go, when I'm coming, I'm going to share things that are important. How, how can you take all of the blessings that we enjoy and not give credit where it's due? So here's my message related to this slide. Don't be a knucklehead, all right? Honor your covenants. And, and I know that there are people here who aren't members of the church. I don't care what religion you are, because we've worked with all of them, Jewish, Muslim, pick it. We talk to them all day long. They're our clients as well. And they're incredible people. And the spirit is not exclusive to LDS people. The spirit is not exclusive to LDS people. But we've made certain covenants that we, that we deeply believe in and deeply value. Don't push those to the side. Don't mock that. You need to honor those things. And life's hard. Come on, I ran an online dating websites for five, six years, <laughs> right? I get the temptations that are there. I saw it. I watched crap happen. Don't be an idiot. Go be strong. Go listen. Go listen. Go honor those covenants. Go here. This is more important than any job you'll ever have, right? So that's the message, too, that we would testify of these things, that all the blessings that we enjoy are because of rules we obey and covenants we keep. And I'll leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we have, Steve, you got like two or three minutes. Class ends at 20 after, right? Does anybody have a quick question before everybody leaves? We have 50 employees. Anything else? We're about a mile north of the football stadium. Just there's a little day's market, but we're probably moving pretty soon. We've outgrown our space. We'll be down by the freeway off 1600 North in Orem pretty quick. Anything else? Good luck, you guys.